Just 75 miles from Euclidea, one of the rocket planes of the Euclidean scientists is down in the water. This should not prove very serious under ordinary conditions, but something went wrong with the plane. The instruments have failed. And now, even the gas-filled bulkheads, which were designed to keep the strange craft afloat, have proven worthless. Captain Bradford, Jerry Hall, Cheops, and Thales are helpless in the water as their craft is slowly sinking. On board a Euclidean submarine racing to their aid on the surface of the water are Joan Gregory and the Euclidean girl commander. They are within a few miles of Jerry, the captain, and the two Euclideans who were with them, but it seems as if even this short distance may be too great. The captain and Jerry have a mighty serious problem on their hands. I think this portion of the plane will float for a few minutes at least. It better float. We're a long swim from anywhere. The chances are that this section will stay where it is for some time, and there's no use pulling it underwater until we have to. Now, look, let's all let loose and float in the water where we can reach out and grab that thing if we need it. Okay, Tex. I'm floating now. Hello over there on the other side. Cheops, Thales. Yes, Captain Bradford. We are here. Are you hanging on to the ship? We are. Better let go and give the wreck a chance to stay afloat as long as it will. We might need to climb up on it. Yeah, but we might find a couple of hungry sharks around here. I am sorry, Captain. It will be impossible for me to release my hold on the wreckage. Why is that impossible? I cannot swim. What? You can't swim. I cannot swim. I am in the same predicament. I cannot swim. Oh, gee, this is swell, Jerry. Yeah, just dandy. Here we are floating around in the Pacific Ocean with a sinking ship and two fellows who can't swim. Yeah, we're all right as long as this wreck stays above water, but those air tanks were all cracked up when we hit them. Seems they'll be opening up any minute. And when that happens, you and I'll have to try to swim and keep those two above water at the same time. Right, that's about the size of it, Jerry. You just take care of yourself. I can handle them. They don't lose their heads. Oh, no, you don't. I can swim as long as you can. We'll take one of those fellows and, and we'll keep them afloat if we have to put them to sleep. Right. You men work your way around to our side of this thing. Very well, Captain. Please, I'm coming. Uh, yes. I'm coming. How, how soon do you, do you think that submarine can get to us, Tex? No way of telling, Jerry. I don't know what speed it's making or exactly how far we are from the position of Euclidean. Uh, just to make it real nice, the submarine skipper isn't exactly sure where to look for us. This is rather an unusual situation, is it not? Captain Bradford? Well, you might call it that. It's a situation that wouldn't happen to us if those Euclidean rocket ships were as blame perfect as you claimed they were. That is true. You are in a position of advantage now, Hall. You may think your remarks well advised, but let me warn you that once we are back in Euclidea, steps will be taken to curb your tongue. Now, before you worry about taking any steps to do anything to us, you'd better give a little thought to saving yourselves. This boat won't float for more than a few minutes more. And when it goes down, we'll swim. Swim and float and tread water. And then swim and float some more. Possibly for hours until that rescue submarine locates us and picks us up. I have told you. I've told you twice that I do not swim. Then you don't give any orders. Tex and I can swim and hold you two above water for a little while. If you do as you're told. We will know how to obey orders. I suppose yeah. you practice it right now. Might save a lot of trouble when the time comes. What, what is to be done? Drop your grip on the side of this boat and turn over on your backs. Turn on our backs? In the water? Sure. <laughs> turn over on your backs. Here, Thales. G give me your hand. Now, don't, don't try to push me through the bottom of the ocean. Just put your hand on my arm. In, in this manner? Yeah, that'll do. Now, you do the same, Cheops. Very well. Now, turn over on your back and try lying as flat as possible in the water. Oh, don't worry about your nose. I'll keep it above water. Uh, very well. You'll do the same thing, Thales. I do not feel any particular confidence in you, Hall. Then you know how I felt about you all the time. You'd better either get some confidence in me or learn to swim. I, I will attempt to turn over on my back. Come on. There you are. That, that wasn't so hard, was it? This is a ridiculous position for a scientist. Maybe, but if Jerry let your head go into water, your position would be a lot more ridiculous. I would suggest, Thales, that you remain silent and be thankful these men are human fish. It's a good idea, Keops. Now, you're doing all right with your floating. Now, both of you know how it's done. Here, flop over right side up again and rest on this boat as long as you can. How, 
How about it, Skipper? Will they do? I think we can handle them, son. If they behave that well after the boat's gone down. You have no fear of our behavior, have you? We haven't any fear. But you'd better have it. If Tex and I get tired swimming around with you, we'll do exactly as ordered. And that may save you a lot of trouble. Well, it looks like we've done all we can until the commander arrives with her submarine. How do you estimate the distance separating us from our rescuer? I don't. I couldn't even guess. Well, uh, at least we can't see anything of her submarine. And she said she'd be on the surface. The submarine which the commander is using will project only ten feet above the water under ordinary conditions. Ten feet. Plus a little if she's riding high and fast. Yes. If the craft is making its best possible speed, it, it will stand less than 15 feet above water. How, how far over the water can you see something only 15 feet high? Well, slightly less than five miles, isn't it, Chubbs? Yes, precisely, precisely. If the submarine is proceeding at top speed, it will not be visible to us until within 180 to 240 seconds run of... Our position. Oh, boy. That's too blame close. If we can't see her any better at that, she can't see this thing half that far. She might run on past us and never know it. Yes, yes, that is indeed possible. Let's break a piece out of the top of this ship and get it up into the air now. That is impossible, Captain. While the construction of this rocket plane has proven inadequate as a protection against a forced landing, you will find it much too strong to be torn apart with the hands. I suppose so. And, and of course, the blame thing turned upside down, so we can't get at the door. That is another weakness we will remember and remedy when construction of more of these ships is done. Better fix plenty of these things before you build any more of these. Hey, Tex, look over there. Where, Jerry? Where? Look where I'm pointing. Can't you see something on top of the I water? Can, plainly. Yes, I should say that was a submarine running on the surface. Get away from this boat, everybody, quick. She's sinking. Oh, boy, sure is. Uh, do we turn over now? You do, and fast. Grab Thales, Jerry. Let's swim out a few strokes. This thing's going to pull plenty when she goes down. Right. Turn over, Thales. Now, now keep your mouth shut. Here we go. You all right, Jerry? Yep. I'm okay. Able to get your breath, Kiosk? <laughs> I'm suffering no discomfort. How are you doing, Thales? I do not care for this position being pulled about by my head as a fish on a line. However, it will suffice. It better. You'd feel like a fish without any water if I let go of you. Jerry, that is a submarine. She isn't over half a mile away. No, but it looks like she's running away from us. I'm afraid she hasn't seen us yet. <laughs> hey, Commander. Hey, the sub. Hey. Please, please. Exercise greater care, Hall. You nearly <laughs> let my head sink when you thrashed around in that manner. Oh, yeah, I've got it. Let me take both of them, Jerry. Here, you men put your hands on my shoulder. Easy now. Okay, son. Now rise up in the water as far as you can and wave your arms. Okay. Uh, it's no use, Tex. She doesn't see us. Yes, she does, Jerry. She's putting about. I can't see where that sub's getting any closer. Well, you won't for a few minutes, probably. She was going at a terrific clip. It'll take us some time to swim around. Get over here to us. Uh, are you sure that that's the Euclidean submarine? No doubt of that. Nothing else on the water today could make that kind of speed. If it is the commander, she will reach us quickly. Yes, that boat will describe a very small arc and lose headway rapidly. It's doing that all right. Golly, whiskers, Tex. Look at that thing come. What a sight, Jerry. That girl has straightened it out and heading right for us. It would be well to signal that she is not to run near us at too great a speed. I imagine that our position would not be too comfortable if the water was rough. You might get part of the ocean in your nose, but we could roll that out of you later. That will not be necessary. The commander is far too clever to endanger a life she is attempting to save. You're right again, Caps. Sub is going to come gliding up to us here without even musting the water. How are we going to board that blame thing? It will not be difficult, I think. No, Jerry. Remember how the nose of those subs open? Yeah. I remember. Well, look now, Jerry, look. That boat's only 100 yards from us. The stern is slowly settling under. She drifts up. I believe the commander will submerge the stern, bring the prow of the submarine to our immediate position in an upward manner, and admit us through the bow airlock. That's it. It's getting closer. Don't wiggle out, Thales. I'll try to keep the water out of your face. I will not move. Now, now only the nose of the sub is sticking up out of the water. It's drifting quietly towards us. 
how that girl can handle that submarine. She sure is good at it. Hey, in the sub there. You're close enough. Don't push us around with that thing. Can you see which side the nose is hinged on, Jerry? Yeah. Right the way it's drifting. And be sure and stay out from under. You might get hurt when it opens. I'll watch it. All right, Kieps. Turn over now and take hold of the edge of this hatchway. Oh, I will do so. You too, Thales. Get yourself a good tight hold there. Can you find a handhold, Jerry? Sure. I'm fine. We are indeed safe. Oh, Jerry, are you with... Joan, what are you doing here? Hello, Joan. We're all right. Come aboard quickly. You must be in need of it. Oh, we can sure use it. You, Thales, will board this vessel first and report to the commander in the central control section. So you presume to issue orders to me? Those are the orders of the commander. Very well. I shall be pleased enough to be aboard. Well, I'll give you a hand. Up you go. It will be sort of pleased to catch you off my hands, too. Can you make it? I'm nearly within the submarine. All right, you're next, Kiops. Right, Joan? That is correct, Captain. Hurry up, Kiops. I'm getting tired of this water. I am making all possible speed. Is Mrs. Gregor on board the sub with you, Joan? No, Captain Bradford. Mother was resting when we left you, Clidia. She does not know of the danger you and Jerry have been in. That's good. All right, Jerry, in you go. Oh, you first, Tex. Orders, Jerry. All right, Skipper. In I go, then. Not good, Nothing but my feelings. I've been holding up that guy Thales for a long time. Now, Captain, the way is clear for you. I'll be right away, Joan. Right in. Will you please follow the others to the central section? The commander has some hot liquid ready for you. I will remain here to close the port. I'll help you, Joan. No, off you go, Captain. It's orders, sir. Aye, aye, Skipper. Now, I will close the port, and we will return to Euclidia at once. 